Hey guys, this is John, and I'm in the hourly Hyper Bullet Arena on LeeChess.org. I'm playing two tournaments today, a Hyper Bullet followed by a regular Bullet Tournament. Been a while since we played a Hyper Bullet Tournament where you start with 30 seconds only, so let's get going. We're playing Atrophied in the first game. This player is pretty high rated, and they're coming at me on the king side. Let's take that pawn right quick, and then counterattack in the center. I want to try to get at them here real quick. Uh, okay, let's just keep taking. We'll take that one too. Unfortunately, they're beating me on the clock right now, so we got to make up some ground. And maybe this is how we can do it. Maybe we can take here next move. Otherwise, it looks pretty good for us. Yeah, we'll take here, give a check. Let's bring this back. We're going to trade a little bit. Let's give a check there, come out with our king. Ooh, that was a blunder by me, but I hope he doesn't see it. Let's do this just to make sure we trade a bit. We'll play f4 next. See if we can take on e5. Ooh, and he's going for the cheapo threat. All right, let's check here. My comp just lagged for a second there. Hopefully that doesn't cost me. Let's do this. We're just going to force him back real quick. Let's just make one move and then checkmate. A little stutter step. All right, so we vanquish Atrophied. Lee Chess Master Atrophied. We're going to eat a lot of games in this tournament. That's how these hyper bullet tournaments roll. And I am currently 2591 rated. I'm still trying to recover my rating points after that disastrous all berserk session. <laughs> you shouldn't care too much about your online ratings, but you know, it's just a, a minor point of pride. All right, I can take this pawn. I could have taken it on the previous move too. Shrek is going to gain a lot of tempos though attacking my wayward knight. Let's try to gain some time back in the center. This pawn looks like it's going to fall. All right, I guess I'll take that. He can take on f2 if he wants. He's going to take that way instead. Let's bring this all the way back for protection. And let's castle. And then undermine the center. Let's take here. He's probably going to take... Yeah, okay, this makes a lot of sense. Let's do this. He can take b2, but I'm just trying to speed up my development. Let's bring the knight over here. And then maybe play h3 just to stop any knight g4 business. I know this is really, really fast. A lot of people don't like this time control, but it's good fun, I think. I think it's interesting to see uh, how you can play even with 30 seconds on your clock. And here we get a checkmate, queen f7. So we win the first two games. And 1540, ooh, you know what? All right, let's, we're berserking a hyper bullet game, guys. We're going to see how this works out. We're going to just go after Malax on this side of the board. Whoa, that was not what I wanted to do there. Yes, berserking a hyper bullet. Not recommended. Not recommended at all. <laughs> okay, let's take here. I'm in check, aren't I? This guy's really fast. This is probably a bad idea. We're just both taking stuff, trying desperately to try to win. He can take my queen, can't he? I have no time at all. Clearly, this was a bad idea. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt about that at this stage. Let's take, try to take that bishop. Nope, he's not going to let us. I have no time left. Oh, I lost on time. All right, so unsuccessful hyper bullet berserk right there. <laughs> that guy was too fast. I gave it a shot. Uh, Colin. Okay, we're not going to berserk against Colin. Colin is a good player. Also a frequent viewer of the stream, of my channel. I'm trying to slow him down. He's playing a Danish Gambit, so I'm just slowing him down a little bit. Trying to make sure he can't attack me outright. Yeah, he's going for h5 and business on the king side, but let's pin him right here. This looks kind of nasty for him. Now I'm going to take your next move, and he is going to be hard-pressed to defend. Let's do this. Yeah, this looks really, really strong. Ooh, and now we get a checkmate in two. So, Milax is actually in first place. They have eight points, having beaten us. E-player is up there, algorithmic. Ooh, and Deep Feller. Okay, Deep Feller. I'm the only one losing rating points in the top ten. J. Bartholomew 2, hello to you. He is calling for a Crazy House video. Thank you guys for the overwhelmingly positive response about that Crazy House video that I posted the other days. The other day, uh, I'll definitely be making that a part of my regular routine. Uh, you know, maybe I'll post one every week or every two weeks, something like that. Possibly more often if there's enough interest. But Crazy House is a lot of fun. As you can see, it's good calculation practice. 
I think that was on full display. And just the the mixture of uh, the you know regular chess strategy that you have to calculate plus the pieces that can be placed, I think adds this nice dimension to the game. Let's do this. He can take d2, though. That was a really bad decision on my part. Tariff sighing. Let's try to counterattack f7, see if we can get a little checkmate going. It's not going to work, but yeah, rook f8 would be good here. I think we have a decent chance to flag them. So that's what I'm going for, playing for the flag. It's a viable weapon in Hyperbullet. Okay, he played rook c2, but it didn't matter. Milax, this guy might have been underrated. Maybe that was a foolhardy berserk on my part. You just never know when you're berserking, right? Because you could be up against someone who knows how to play against a berserker. You could be up against an underrated opponent. It's just, it's never a for sure thing. I think as, as Tybalt put it on uh, the Reddit forums recently, he said, the berserk is supposed to be kind of a foolhardy option. You know, it's not like, it's not like they're building the berserk option to be some sort of like deep strategic weapon in a tournament. Like, it's widely known that it, you're not supposed to berserk. It's a bad idea. <laughs> so you you do so at your own risk. I think that was in reference to someone. Someone posted a comment on my 100% berserks video. And they said uh, they said that I was complaining because I lost a bunch of rating points in that tournament. Which, of course, is not true. I knew fully what I was getting into by berserking every game. <laughs> it's ridiculous to assume otherwise. That's assumption of the risk 101. Okay, let's... Double algorithmics pawns. And he might let us take the c3 pawn. Maybe not. I'm going to try to develop an attack c4. We're going to win c4. And let's do this. Ooh, that was probably a very bad decision on my part to let him take there. Let's withdraw this knight. Because he could have taken and doubled up my pawns. That would have been unpleasant. Now if this knight moves, I might win the, the bishop that was on g5. Okay, let's take here. And we'll bring this back. Uh, b7 is hanging, but I'm not going to stop to really consider that for too long you can still take b7 if he wants i'll just play here i think i'm going to get this pawn next we have a 10 second lead on the clock so let's not let him make an easy pre-move with rook takes c1 let's look for a trade Ooh, and he went for the bishop hang yeah sometimes people do that out of desperation they just play a move regardless of the consequences consequences just to get a move in basically whoops didn't mean to do that Okay, let's take this. He's playing some annoying check moves. Giving up all his material, but resisting pretty well, I gotta say. Let's just get out of the way. Try not to stalemate him. Alright, go for the flag. It's very important in those time scrambles that you don't get too concerned about playing for checkmate. If you're a few seconds ahead in a time scramble, it's best not to um, stalemate your opponent for one thing. And... Just play for the flag, usually. Unless you have a very simple check checkmate to execute. If you're down on time, then you might have to go for checkmate. But like that situation I just had, not necessary to play for mate. Yes, fishy vishy, I lost against that one player. We're playing deep feller next. This player is usually really fast. Let's see what they come up with here. This is a new feature that Lee Chess has. They show the position in the tournament that you are. So this is number five versus number four. I think that's a nifty little feature. Let's close it up. Let's go here. Maybe b5. Okay. Deep Feller is quite a tough opponent. I don't know how quick they are, but they're always right in there in tournaments. So, you know, I got to handle with care, of course. Let's bring this in. Just go after their queen side a little bit. I'm going to get queen takes b3 in. And then let's take here. We're guarding f7, so that's nice. Let's bring this back. Ooh, he blundered. He blundered big time. You're not going to escape this one, deep feller. I'm sorry to say. That's checkmate. Yeah, he assumed I was going to take on b2, so we caught him there. All right, e player. Let's get this on. Let's see if e player does his usual stuff with f5 and whatnot. I'm going to try to treat this in a novel way. Something E player maybe hasn't seen. Go for E4. A quick E4. Ooh, we get a fork. Fork the dark square bishop and the knights. All right, so he's going to yeah, he's gonna try to make H2 a slightly uncomfortable square for me. 
But that's okay. I think I'm going to be able to defend all the same. Ooh, and he drops his queen. So we should be able to take care of business against E player in this one. Let's go here and maybe play F4. Yeah, let's go F4, although G3 is hanging. That was not the greatest of moves. Okay, I'll take that. Why not? As long as you're offering. Oh, I didn't mean to do that move. I always seem to, to slip against E player. All right, we'll come here. Invade with the queen. He's way down on time. I'm going to give him a check just because. <laughs> All right, back to tournament. So 24 points. We're in the lead. So how is Malax doing? This 1645 player is hanging right in there. Oh, Kuorg, 1871. I'm not going to berserk. I'm on a streak right now. Not that many people streaking like in the top five. So let's just try to keep the winning, the winning train going. All right, let's try to undermine this pawn center that White has. Take here. If he takes with the knight, all right, I think trade and then take and then bring this knight out to c6 is all right. Let's go bishop f5 and get ready to castle queenside. Okay, I'm going to let him take and double up my pawns if he wants. I like my light square bishop. That's a strong bishop right there. Now we're threatening uh, e3 and c3 in that circumstance. Let's go here and just break up his pawns a little bit. We'll take that guy, bring this rook over. Hmm. Now we're going after g2, which he apparently let me take. Let's bring this over. See if we can play for checkmate. Bishop g3 was a good move. Let's just take that. Simple. Keep it simple, right? Win on time. 28 points. So as I said, if you've got this far and you're not interested in Hyper Bullet at all, don't worry because I'm posting another tournament today. Just regular Bullet. I know it's really hard to follow stuff in this time control sometimes. Let's play for e4 and then e5. Go after that knight. Okay, we'll do this. Let's play a3 just to make sure that b4 is not a big problem. Bring this out. Uh, okay, I'll come here. We'll take that. And then we're going to try to set up some threats against their king, but... It's proving difficult at the moment. I'm sort of on the defensive, I gotta say. I guess you can take that. I probably shouldn't have played that move. Let's go here. Maybe pop the queen out to g4. Try to get some stuff going here. See if he wants to take. All right, let's do that. Ooh, we hung the queen again. So we've been the, the beneficiary of some big blunders by this player. Oh boy, okay, let's do that. Let's come up here, take some pawns. I'm gonna let them queen, apparently. Oh, got him on time. Okay, I had 0.6 left when I won against <laughs> Mr. Deep Feller right there. That was somewhat fortunate. Alex Math is the next guy. You know, knight f3 and g3, there's no telling um, the, the length of the games you're going to get with that move. e4 is more to the point, so I kind of think I'd be better off playing e4 most of the time, but ooh, that's a free queen against Alex Math, and that's a rook we're going to get in the corner too. Let's give a check and then go take that bishop. Go bishop e3, just look to trade. Trade down. Let's go knight d4, more to the point. Okay, well, I'm just going to go in for the kill. He can take my bishop, but this is checkmate in a few. Mate, all right, back to tournament. We've already got a lot of games in, 12 minutes remaining. Millax again. I learned my lesson the first time. I'm not going to berserk this guy. We're just going to play normal, see if we can catch their queen, like so. That's the dangers of pre-moving too much. I think I've demonstrated this before, but yeah, if you pre-move a, a lot, then you know you're you're gonna fall victim to this sort of thing sometimes. All right, here we have a mate. Take and then after this, bishop e3, uh, king e1, queen d2, queen takes f2, checkmate. Common mating pattern with queen and bishop. Brain slip is next. Let's castle. We'll go for c4, take on d5. 
I'm going to reroute this knight for who knows what reason. And then I'm going to play for b4. This is a little more reasonable than rerouting the knight, as I was describing. Knight d4 is a good move. I should not allow that. I'm going to try to bring my queen in like so. If we trade, I am threatening bishop takes c6, though. Still, I am not sure. Okay, now, now it's looking okay with my rooks connected. b7 is under attack. Let's go after that one. Brain slip is dropping pieces, but I think they're kind of just playing for time at this stage. I think they're going to play to flag me, for lack of a better term. Let's go here. It's 12 seconds to 12 seconds. Let's try to hurry this baby up. Knight b6 coming. All right, I guess I'll just trade that. Oh boy, he took that way. Was not expecting that. Let's go after e7. Uh, okay, bring this up. Uh-oh. It was a tactical error on my part, but he's now playing for the clock. And I think that's a bad strategy. I think he sacked his rook too early. All right. Whew. Close one there. So who is in the mix still? We've opened up a lead. E player is next once again. Let's see if he wants to play that same gambit or if it's going to be different this time. We'll pre-move the queen back here. He's going to try to set up his old knight on e5 idea. Let's bring our pawn out here and really attack this center. That's what we're all about. Let's go here, attack the bishop, attack the pawn. This looks already kind of unpleasant for him. We'll take... I think we win a pawn out of this. Okay, let's just do this. Castle. Probably g6 to come is a good idea. Maybe knight b4 after this. Try to harass that bishop on d3. I'm going to go after the b2 pawn for now. Get behind this. Let's play f5. Go here. Maybe play for e5 too. This looks like a good plan. Ooh, now we get these connected pawns. I think he's going to sack on e4 because the alternatives do not look good. Okay, let's do this. Let's bring the queen in. Let's push some pawns. Uh, maybe he can take here, but I'm not too concerned. All right, we're looking good, especially if we trade queens. Ooh, we got his queen. Got the old queen. Uh, let's go here for discovered attack potential. We're going to win all his pieces. That's a check. Uh, let's throw in a check here just to just to repeat. Throw in a check again. That's going to be your ball game. All right, so 48 points. Best lifestyle has 32. Feels like we've been playing a while because that's we've got tons of games in already. But we haven't been playing for that long. There's eight minutes left in the tournament. So who's up next? UMVCU. E. <laughs> okay, knight bd2. Let's play for e5. Attack that wayward knight. He's going to counterattack in the center, kind of like you would in a French defense. Let's bring this back. Now I'm going to play to control the e5 square. I'm going to see if I can do that. However, it's a little tricky because I need f2 defended, don't I? So let's do this. Uh, he can take. He could have taken on f2. So that looked inaccurate on my part. I'm going to go after that e4 pawn and see if we can win it. Looks like we do. Let's see if he wants to trade because I get pressure on the e6 pawn immediately. And we win the e6 pawn. All right, so we're ahead two pawns. We're also ahead on the clock. This is looking good for us. Probably should play f5 and just restrict his king a little bit. Maybe even walk my king all the way up to h5 and... I think that pawn is going to fall right here. He maybe could have played bishop f8 there, but I don't think that was working even. Let's go after this pawn now. Push this guy. So we win the bishop. Let's put our bishop on d4 and then just push. Push all the pawns. He's going to try to hide behind our own pawns. But in reality, this should never work. I'm going to ignore his pawns and just bring it up my king and checkmate. Okay, back to tournament. So we have 52 points. On a very nice streak since that Malax game. I still want to try to Berserk one. Uh, you know what? All right, let's Berserk. Just for, just for the fun of it. We've opened up a pretty big lead. That was a tactical error on my part. He could have played Bishop takes F7. If I want to work on my speed, I got to do this, right? <laughs> I got to Berserk some games that seem unberserkable. Let's see if we want to trade here. 
see trades like this help me because um you know i'm down on time so anytime i get to make like a pre-move type move he's gonna trade again probably nope okay let's just play g6 let's bring this up maybe not that move let's go here look for a trade this way let's bring this back attack his bishop let's bring this over Oh, and I won on time. Okay, so successful hyper bullet berserk. <laughs> that one went well. Uh, you know what I was saying? Like when he makes those exchanges and he just like uh, willingly trades with us, that works to our advantage in a hyper bullet game because especially one where we berserked because uh, I just have all my pre-moves at the ready. So I think it's very important when you're playing someone who's berserking that you play to disrupt their pre-move streaks. You don't want them pre-moving too many moves. Okay, let's go here. He might be playing for b5, but I'm going to just back off my queen for protection. Maybe knight f6 if I get the chance. Okay, let's come here. Play the knight into c5. Looks really good there. Do this. See if we can open up an attack somehow. Let's play h4. I think our position is good, but d4 is hanging. All right, now we get this knight in. That's a hang of a minor. Let's do this, and then we take on c7 at the end. I'm going to double up my rooks, and then maybe infiltrate with the queen, attacking d8. He saw that. Uh, I'm going to set up a checkmate on g7. Let's take that guy. So now we check, and then we win h7. This is not best play, but that's all right. We'll go after his queen. Let's go here. Going after his queen again. We win the queen. All right, back to tournament and four minutes remaining. We're 21 points ahead of the field. Deep Feller has played the same amount of games as us, but they've had a kind of a streaky time of it in the middle. Let's go after their knight. I'm going to go h5 and a quick h4, or I was going to at least. Now it's going to be harder. Okay, we still get this move in. That's nice. Let's go here and attack this guy. Let's do this. I think I'm going to castle by hand, actually. I'm going to do this and then try to play it this way. Ooh, i got to be careful. Bishop e5. Maybe our king is safe out here. Who knows? <laughs> Probably not, but... Okay, let's bring this over. I'm just trying to be very safe right now. Very cautious of my dark squares and such. He's going to sack the exchange. Mr. Deep Feller. Okay, let's do this. Maybe give a check somehow. Okay, well, let's come into the second rank at least. Let's do this. D4 could be played, but he chooses not to. We're bringing in the king again, much like we did in that other game against Deep Feller. He is desperate, man. Okay, let's just take that one. Bring up the stuff, you know? Bring up the pieces. That's checkmate. Okay. Okay. Two minutes and 30 seconds remaining. 65 points. Thank you, Lufo. Thank you for the support. French and Slav is in. Best lifestyle. National Master Matrix. Oh, hello, Lufo. You know what, Lufo? Let's do this thing. Let's do this proper. <laughs> oh, Lufo is berserking as well. Okay, all right. The gauntlet has been thrown down, I guess. I'm going to try to checkmate them. But I don't think Lufo's going to have any of it. I think he's going to find a good way to defend. I'm dropping a piece, but I'm hoping that it takes him so long to realize that I've dropped a piece. Now he's going to drop this back. Okay, take that. Now we're going to come here, check. And let's castle. He's going to hide his king. Lufo is employing the duck and dodge strategy. Uh-oh. Let's try to queen this pawn. Oh, boy. All right, we flagged him. <laughs> Lufo, thank you for being a good sport and double berserking in a hyper bullet game. You don't see that too often. Minute and a half left. <laughs> fishy Vishy wants to play, I'm pretty sure. Deep Feller once again. 
So we've beaten Deep Feller a few times this tournament. I feel like they're getting frustrated. Like they, oh yeah, there, there it is. There's the Berserk. So here it comes from Deep Feller. Uh, please take that. This is a line I've actually looked at recently. Let's do this. That Rook is hanging in the corner. We'll go take this. Then we'll play Bishop F4, look to swap. Okay. Come here, attack the Queen. Let's do that. Really pin them up, huh? Then we could just take on E6. Trade all the Queens. Yeah, Deep Feller resigned. Okay, so they had an unsuccessful hyper bullet berserk against us, but <laughs> I mean, they did it when they were way behind. They probably just did it for fun, so I think that's going to be it. We've got only seconds remaining. It's a fun one. It's a fun time control. It gets the heart beating, I'll tell you that. There's some strategy involved. A lot of it is like predicting what your opponent's going to play and having your response at the ready. So, if you're Johnny on the spot with the moves and you're able to like reliably predict how the game's going to go. You have a huge advantage in Hyper Bullet. So we take the tournament with 74 points, and French and Slav got third, Deep Feller, or sorry, second, and Deep Feller took third. Good games to everyone involved. Anyways, I'm going to join this next tournament right away, so stick around if you want to watch that video, and thank you guys for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.